Hey guys, I am here in San Francisco, California in an undisclosed location, a garage. And guess who I have here? Ryan McCaffrey from a Ride the Lightning podcast. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you uh, coming to this strange bunker that we've found ourselves in. As long as we have a Tesla next to us, I think we will be okay. Indeed. Well, so I have so many questions. This is the first time I'm talking to you, so I'm really excited because I have so many questions. Uh, now, you've been doing your podcast for uh, over... Three years now? Almost three years, coming up on the anniversary soon, yeah. Awesome, happy anniversary. Thank you, appreciate it. And so it is an unofficial Tesla podcast, uh, and it's weekly. Yes, yeah, the idea was, uh, you know, it's a week recap. So I, most people, it's funny, I, you know, everybody listens to podcasts in their own way. Uh, some people get it right on Sunday when it, when it posts. Uh, a lot of people like it on their Monday commute. So it's a nice part about podcasts is you can just listen to it anywhere, anytime. That is true, and that's what I do. And uh, for those of us who do listen to you weekly, we know you're just about to become a first-time Tesla owner. <clears throat> what, two weeks? I, I, well, I, that would be nice. We'll see. I mean, it's, uh, I was able to get my Performance Model 3 in or, order in quickly. Uh, so theoretically, I should be one of the, the first ones out of the out of the gate, and I happen to live a stone's throw away from the factory, so there's no, I don't have to wait for a car to be shipped anywhere. So I'm just, uh, if the car gods smile upon me, it'll be sometime in the next few weeks, I hope. And you're getting a performance uh, and dual motor, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it worked out where I figured this, this might be my, my YOLO purchase, my YOLO car for life where... We'll see, but I can't wait to, uh, to just see what, what three and a half seconds to 60 feels like. It, it feels like you want to throw up. <laughs> just, just, uh, sorry to, uh, to, to... All right, well, but listen, I, I, I think that I have this question a lot of people do. Um, you know, why wait all the way till now to get a Tesla? Uh, just talking about it every week, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you just like run out and gotten one before that? What made you wait for it? And what made you wait specifically for, uh, uh, what do you call it, P3D? Yeah, I mean, that's a totally fair question. And it's, you know, it's like, well, why would you be crazy enough to, to make a podcast about Tesla every week for three years when you don't even have one? And it's, you know, my, I live in the most expensive city in the country, San Francisco, and you know, I, I, uh, I, I got a roof over my head, but I'm certainly not swimming in a bathtub of money every night. So, you know, my, my means are what they are, and, and I knew that uh, if, I, if I planned and I saved, that I'd kind of have one shot to either get, well, do I, do I get a Model S a year ago, uh, and, and uh, it would probably be a lower, you know, base, kind of a base Model S, which would be great. But if I stay patient and I plan, uh, I could probably find myself into a pretty well-equipped Model 3. And living and working in San Francisco, the, the smaller Model 3 actually appeals to me more. It, for my situation, uh, the, the tight street parking, uh, my, my office garage is super tight. So I actually, I actually like the idea of a slightly smaller car. So. Between, you know, and, and the Model 3 has some new tech in it that hasn't, that'll inevitably get into the S, like the, the HVAC system, uh, for instance, which, which has been really well received so far. But so, yeah, it was just kind of a, I really had to think very long and hard about it. It's a really fair question. And I, I've decided I, I'm going to stay patient. I'm going to save for, for a, a, a loaded up Model 3. And, and uh, I actually feel really good about that decision here on the, on the eve of, of finally getting it. Yeah, and, and uh, you know you, you're in kind of a unique situation because uh, uh, your 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 Model Three looks like being washed over by no one other than Elon Musk. Even though it looks that way, uh, I've noticed in the last few months you guys kind of became Twitter buddies, if you will. Every time you tweet at him, he's right back replying to you. How in the world did you get Elon Musk to reply to your Twitter uh, messages all the time and watch over your Model Three? Well, it's, it's certainly not every time. There, there are plenty of questions that I still ask him that, that go unanswered for whatever reason, whether he doesn't see them or whether he chooses not to answer them. But I just, uh, you know, I, I do have the good fortune uh, through my day job of having a verified Twitter account, which really in practice doesn't do much for you except, except if, if it strokes your ego, it'll, it'll do, like I've got the blue check mark. But the one practical thing it does is it'll bump you up when you reply to someone. If so, someone like Elon Musk with 22 million followers, and they have, you know, he's getting thousands of replies to anything he tweets, it'll, it'll push me up there. So uh, I think just having that 
higher chance of visibility has helped a lot. And I just, I like to think that hopefully I'm asking good, smart questions in a polite and respectful way that, that appeal to something in him, whether if I was, you know, I'm asking about the aluminum pedals, that's, you know, he, he's such a designer, he thinks, oh, that, maybe that'd be cool. Or, or the red brake calipers, you know, same thing. So, I don't know, I, I, I know f that this could end at any moment. He could be like, all right, I've, I've been replying to that guy long enough. I'm not going to bother with him He anymore. can hang up on you on Twitter, just so you know. <laughs> he, he, can, he can mute me. He can block me. He could, uh, he could just ignore me. So you know, He probably blocked me. I, I, he replied to me only one time, and it was the last time he ever replied, you know? We'll see. I don't know. I'm just uh, trying, to, trying to enjoy it. It's, it's been super fun to, uh, to at least know. I know for a fact now from, from Twitter that he's at least aware of the podcast I'm doing. I can't imagine he listens to it. The guy's got six million things going on literally every second of the day. But it's cool to, to, to at least know, like, oh, okay, he, Elon at least knows what I'm up to, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Well, so let's go back at first. Uh, when did you kind of find out about Tesla and what got you really fascinated to the, you know, to the point that, you know, this is your kind of second job doing the podcast. Uh, what was this? And has it evolved? Yeah, I'll tell you the, the quick version of my like Tesla superhero origin story. For me, it goes back, it was uh, summer of 2009. Uh, I, at the time, owned my first dream car, which was a DeLorean, which I was lucky enough to have a DeLorean for 12 years. I'd seen Back to the Future when I was a kid and just always loved that car. And I was just lucky enough to be able to get one uh, a, a while ago. And, and so I, I worked, I coordinated club activities. We have a Northern California DeLorean uh, Motor Club. You know, I sold my DeLorean some years ago. That's a different story. But at the time, 2009, I, uh, I'd found out, you know, I started to somehow became aware of Tesla. I can't remember exactly how, but the Roadster had released this little electric two-seat supercar, sports car. I was like, well, that's cool. And then I came to find out somehow, some way, that they were local. They're in the Bay Area. I was like, well, that's cool because all the other car companies are in Detroit or overseas. And so I thought, and, and then I came to learn that there were these bizarre, completely coincidental similarities between Tesla at the time and the DeLorean story. Both American startup car companies started by very uh, highly visible, outspoken CEOs, John DeLorean and Elon Musk. Both of them had ties to Lotus. Lotus was obviously building the gliders for, for the Roadster, and Lotus did all the uh, chassis engineering on the DeLorean. Uh, so, uh, you know, bo and both cars were actually built in the UK and then sent over here as a The Lotus Elise, right? That the body that they used. Exactly right. And so there's, you know, there's completely coincidental similarities, but it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. And so I just. I was looking for an activity to do with our DeLorean club and I thought, well, why don't I reach out to Tesla and maybe they would like, maybe that maybe we could do an event with them at their, they had one store. There was, there was one location. It's not the, down the road, right? Uh, no, Menlo Park. Oh, that's right. That was the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, before Santana Row, Menlo Park, this old Chevy dealership that they'd bought uh, right on El Camino Real and, uh, and they, there was a building in the back, a separate building that customers didn't go to, but that was the final assembly building. They would get the battery packs and the power electronics modules from Japan, and they would, uh, that's where they would mate them to the, uh, the gliders, you know, the, the, the battery-less bodies that would come over from, uh, from Lotus. And, and so I said, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm with this DeLorean club. Is there any chance we could come out and, and maybe get a tour of your place? And to their extreme credit, they said, sure, come on out. And uh, we, we brought 17 DeLoreans out, which was a lot more than our club usually turns out. People were really excited to go see this Tesla company. And they gave us a tour. They showed us that, that back building that the public didn't get to see. And uh, it was just a great, great day. And, and I emailed to thank them the next day, the, the people that I set it up with at Tesla. And, and they, they wrote back and said, you want to come uh, take a test drive of the Roadster? I said, well, sure, that sounds great. Uh, and, and as soon as I got in that car and started up Sand Hill Drive and then down 280 here in the, in the Bay Area, Palo Alto, uh, that was, that was the, the light bulb went off for me, Alex. Is, is, it was, oh my goodness, this is, this is how we should be doing cars now. This, this instant torque and one pedal driving, and this is incredible. And from there, 
I just learned, I went totally down the Tesla rabbit hole and learned everything there was to know. Uh, I have started following you know, the developments of when they, they bought the Numi plant from Toyota and they were going to start building the S and, and I, just, uh, I just became a, a sponge for Tesla information and eventually my wife got sick of hearing me talk Tesla all the time and I thought, well, I do podcasts with my day job so why don't I just start a Tesla podcast? I'll just put it out there and if anybody listens to it, great. But if not, like I'm just making, I'm just doing this. And, uh, and that was really it. It's, I've been lucky that, that there are other people out there like me that are as, that is excited and fascinated by Tesla. And it's, my podcast has uh, found a nice audience over the last few years. And, and, and yeah, here we are. Now I'm, now I'm finally almost about to, to, to go from the kid with his face pressed up against the glass, wishing he could be inside with all the other Tesla owners. To, I'm, I'm almost the guy, I'm almost inside now. I'm almost there. So it's been a really amazing, super fun, incredible journey. Yeah, and, and, and many people kind of came along the ride with it as, as they listen to your podcast. That, that, that is actually a pretty cool story. Yeah, uh, oh, wow. All right, so let's talk about we heard about what happened back then, and I think everybody has a cool story when they first time realized that Tesla is the way to go, right? You know, now it's been, what, seven, eight years since then. Um, what do you see about the brand that you still really like and believe that people can still be really excited, even if that's their first time kind of seeing one or hearing about it? And what are your maybe concerns about what's happening that maybe not exactly how you thought this would go? I mean, for me, it comes back to the, the from the Roadster now up through the SX and now the three, th what I what I love about Tesla that I that I love, you know, I'm I'm happy to see Chevy doing a Bolt and I'm happy to see Nissan making a new Leaf, particularly the newer one with the be better range and the much better looks. But for me, what what still excites me about Tesla, because I've always been into cars ever since I was a little kid. You know, the, there was the DeLorean, but I just always loved cars. But and so with Tesla, for me, it's that it's that Tesla. They seem to, in their DNA, care about the passion of, of cars and car uh, and driving in the sense that like, th they're all beautiful cars and they're all cars that are fun to drive. Uh, that, that, and that's not necessarily true. And I mean, that was p not true at all of electric vehicles up until Tesla brought the Roadster around. And, and they, have, they have changed that. So it's that... It's, you, mean, I, you mean you didn't enjoy the 2009 Nissan Leaf? <laughs> was it around? I have to answer that. <laughs> it wasn't around in 09. What? Wait a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, so it's that, it's that, I think, spirit of fun about the Teslas that, that if, you know, even if you don't care about being green and zero emissions, just the, the fact that the cars are beautiful and they're fun. I mean, that's, that's what I love about it. And to answer your other question, you know, about the future and, and where things are going, I mean, you know, it's the, the growing pains are, are real and it's like the scaling up and is, is hopefully everything safety wise is on the up and up at the factory and and you just hope that they can get through this is i feel like this is like tesla's adolescence like they're in puberty right now like the, the roadster they were an infant they were a newborn and like oh this is cool and there there's such a promising future ahead and then with the s i was like okay well we can see the, where this this the where tesla is is going as a as a as a company they, they are hitting puberty i guess because all the hissy fits and locking in their room and you know i like that i like the way you put it so yeah so it's like i you know it's hopefully they can come out of the other side of this of this uh, adolescent phase as a as an adult well-rounded uh nice respectful car company that that we all will you know still continue to love and and i really believe that they will i i think um, you know, Elon is, is the, the, the key to the whole thing. I mean, you know, you can criticize him for a lot of things, but at the end of the day, I, I don't think Tesla s it survives without, without Elon's vision and guidance. But JB, JB Straubel, I think, is the secret weapon that doesn't get a lot of credit, uh, enough credit at Tesla. You know, he's, he, he's making the battery stuff happen, and he's making a lot of stuff happen. And so there's, there's, there's a brain trust at Tesla that I feel very confident in. 
I don't think he gets enough credit. And then from everything that I've heard, that he is really the stable sort of unsung hero of the company that's been there all along and makes a lot of things happen that he never, people, I bet a lot of people watching was like, who's this guy, Jimmy? Okay, yeah, so I, I, totally, I, I think people should mention him more, actually. Um, I haven't done it enough, but he is a, a, a sort of a, um, um, you know, somebody who I'm sure Elon relies on a lot, and he's made a lot of things happen. Yeah, no doubt. In fact, I, I, I was lucky enough to be at the, uh, the Model 3 launch event last uh, July 28th, 2017, and there was a sort of like backstage, that's not the right way to put it, but there was like a green room kind of thing for the, the, um, the, the guests that were there, the non-employee guests, uh, which I was lucky enough to be one of. And I saw JB and I was like, this is my chance to like say hello and maybe mention the podcast, who knows, but he clearly was, he is not as, he's not looking for the spotlight or for attention the way that, the way, I'm not saying Elon necessarily is, but he's not, he, he seemed to me not as comfortable with it and he was, so, and I read that right away, so I just, I just thanked him for, thank you for building Model 3 and, and, I, and I let him be. So I think he kind of, I think he prefer, he seems to prefer maybe just being a quieter behind the scenes kind of guy and that's, that's fine. Every time I see him is because he's walking to his car after an event while, you know, all the security is taking care of Elon and he's just kind of doing his thing. It's always been nice to everybody, including myself, so I, absolutely. But, so, but back to Elon. What, what is going on with him, you think, uh, uh, this year? Obviously, I mean, you're obviously on Twitter talking to him, but um, I feel like he, he's, uh, he's definitely, something changed with him. I don't know if things are getting to him, or, or maybe this is the time for he believes that he really needs to step up, sort of a, a, a defense of this, of this whole thing. Oh, is it, do you think, is a phase, or what do you think is going on? Because I think you might have a unique view on that. Well, I, I can I relate to it in a in a in a, my own small way. So, my uh, my day job affords me a what I consider a reasonably large Twitter following, uh, a little over a hundred thousand followers. I say that not out of ego, but to make a point here, and that is, you know, I see with 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 that follower count, um, working in in video games, which I which I do, I see sort of the the darker side of that sometimes like just you know you get you get a lot of weird drive-by stuff where you're just kind of like that's either like wow that's totally not true what you just said or why like wow that's really mean why would you say that so th the reason I said is when I when I so I think about my own experience on Twitter like that and and then I I try to think about Elon's version of that where he has not only 22 million followers as of when we're making this video but uh, he's a world famous person. I'm very much not. Uh, so he's just, it's the, the amount of that sort of vitriol and uh, the, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and the, the misinformation that, and the, the, the just weird things like that get thrown his way must be just orders of magnitude higher than anything I'm, I've ever seen, even with my. Twitter following. So I think that's a lot of it where I think he's probably just fed up with it. There are, you know, very, I don't want to say that it's a fact, but there are very, very strong cases to be made that there are coordinated, there's anecdotal evidence, put it this way, that there's, there are coordinated attacks from certain people with, with histories of shorting stocks trying to bring down companies that it appears to be happening to Tesla and he obviously sees that and knows that. And if, if you'd built a thing that against all odds over 15 years and now there was this coordinated attack and, and or just misinformation and all these things, these forces against you when you're just trying to make great things that you, that you believe are making the world a better place, I can understand why he would reach a point where he would just say, you know what, I've, I've got to, I've got to come back. I've got to, I've got to hit back sometimes. I've got to clap back because, uh, you know, you want to, even I read, I read some of Elon stuff and I just go, I wish he'd just, just let it, you know, let it go. Just, it's, just, you know, the tweet will be gone if you just let it go. But, but, but that stuff in the, I agree, by the way, in today's day and age, at the other hand is you let that fester and it spreads and it suddenly becomes the narrative. So I, I see both sides of it. Um, and I, I empathize with Elon. I don't think he always makes 
the best decisions as far as what he's saying publicly on Twitter. Um, he is human, so I, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, I, I try to see both sides of it. But it's, I, I see just a daunting, just this daunting wave of, of opposition where he's just trying to make a thing and make it good and make the world a better place. Thank God I have no following on Twitter. I think it's like seven people. Two, two of them is my mom and my you dad. YouTube. You got a lot of YouTube subscribers. Though. You get a lot of views. So, you know, you, you got those YouTube comments right. down there. You got that is, that is <laughs> my, you're right. My life is kind of difficult. I, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, let's talk about, like, you know, you know uh, there, there, there's a lot of people who are saying what's going to happen, you know, to Tesla even within a year. Uh, from people who think this is, this is the Tesla Model 3, that is a revolution. That's going to just completely blow this you know, uh, brand all over the world. And there are people all the way to, to who believe that they're just, just about to go bankrupt. Where do you see Tesla in the next year or two? What do you think is going to happen as, as they kind of looks like past some of the difficult times? Well, obviously, being a Tesla enthusiast and someone who's been making a Tesla podcast every single week for the last three years, I'm very optimistic. I mean, you, you, you're talking about a company that has, uh, as of last official tally very recently, 420,000 standing reservations for a car uh, that, that, is, that they haven't even begun to properly advertise. They've, as, as we record, they've just now... Uh, opened up orders to anyone so they're taking more orders they're just about they're just starting test drives so i think in a year from now we're going to see a more mature model 3 full production you're going to start to see them in the streets and and what will happen i think is the same thing that happened with the model s but on a much much larger scale and what happened with the s you can probably relate as a model s owner yourself is that uh, although particularly, I mean, you're in California, particularly outside the California sort of Tesla bubble, uh, I say that respectfully, but, you know, in, in, in more, uh, you know, non-California areas, somebody in the neighborhood gets a Model S, and then the neighbors are like, what, what do you got, what is that? And then you take them for a ride, and then they go, whoa, this is super cool, and, and, the, and word spreads, it's a, like a grassroots thing, neighborhood by neighborhood. Uh, and, and you've started to see like S's replace Porsche Panameras in neighborhoods, you know, and, and, and re replace Mercedes S series uh, and, you know, BMW 7 series and what have you. So I think with the Model 3, that same thing is going to happen, uh, but it'll, it'll happen much quicker because the car costs less and, uh, and much quicker because of the, the production is so much higher. The production rate so much higher in Model 3. So I'm extraordinarily optimistic. And then Tesla, Elon will just, he'll get everybody all riled up and excited again when in a year from now, there'll probably be hundreds of thousands of reservations for Model Y. The SUVs are the most popular type of car in America. Especially and compact SUVs. Exactly right. And the, you know, the, the, we're expecting the unveil event for that to be in, in March or so. And Presumably, that's when they'll start taking reservations. So, I guess think guess who got him to say that? Wasn't he? Wasn't he having a conversation with you about uh, that? Yes, actually. That was, <laughs> I was just. By the way, yes, buddy. Thanks. To, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> yeah, I forget what we were even talking about. You guys talk so much, you forget <laughs> all this conversation he's having with you. Yes, but guess what happened? Yeah, but it was yeah, all right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, all right. So you know, I asked this question pretty much of everybody because you know I am you know my channel is about electric cars in general and this is something that comes up a lot this year I just wanted to get your opinion on this you know I always think of Tesla as an iPhone right they've uh, they've uh, disrupted the market they came up with an amazing product uh, it's spreading people love it uh, they don't care how much it costs really most of the uh, most of the time um, but to each iPhone there will always be an Android right and uh, it, it, I'm I'm kind of wondering who is going to be the company or manufacturer that will catch up uh, to Tesla? And what do you think it will take, right? Is, is it going to take that it's a better product? Do you think it's going to be because it's got a, a maybe extra services around it, like, like uh, you know, e-mobility and stuff like that and the networks? Do you think it's because they're going to have another bigger showman uh, uh, to outshine Elon? Who do you think is going to be and what will it take? That's a fantastic question. That's an absolutely fantastic question. I worked on it all night. <laughs> well, it, it is great. That's, that's a really fun thought exercise. I mean, I, I think the car that might be best positioned to capture the, the same sort of 
passion and enthusiasm could be the Taycan, the Porsche, Porsche Mission E. Because uh, Porsche, Porsche seems to be taking that car seriously. Uh, and you know, they've talked about a, a real, fa like a fast charging network and, and that it's gonna be a performance car for the track and the specs will be pretty impressive. So I think you know, if, if Porsche can, can energize the Porsche base, who loves their 911s and their their Panameras and you know and, and they're they're out there on the track and having fun like if if that crowd who who for whatever reason ha doesn't hasn't or won't look at a Tesla I think I think Porsche could be the one even though they only have plans as we as far as we know of making one electric car that car well, two, they've actually added the crossover SUV, and that's due in another two years. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, they're not exactly going to electrify all fleet, you know, overnight. Right, okay, well, that's great. I, I hadn't, I had missed that announcement. Uh, so... There's a YouTube channel you can check Eco out. It's, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Subscribe. Subscribe today. Subscribe below. Um, so yeah, because, you know, by what we can see in front of us, suggests that Chevy has no real interest in mass producing the Bolt. They seem to be content with the 20, 30,000 it's gonna sell. I, I would love for them to prove that wrong, but that car has been on the market for a year and a half now, and you know, it's doing okay, but it's, uh, they don't seem to be really pushing it or, or getting a lot behind it. Um, Nissan, more aggressive. Uh, they replaced, you know, the, the Leaf just got a, a generation two upgrade much improved looks, thank goodness. It's no longer fugly. Oh my goodness, that first one, boy, that we could make a whole separate video about yeah. that. But the new one looks great. Um, the new one looks great and it has much better range. So uh, that's great to see, but there doesn't seem to be any other electrification effort from Nissan that, that I can immediately see like, hey, how about um, let's try an electric GTR. Let's have some fun. But so that's why I really think like, I mean, you and I were talking before we, we recorded, uh, Audi seems to be getting a little serious, which is great, but I really think, you know, the, the key part of the reason, I talked about it earlier in our interview, that the, the, the reason that I am continue to be energized by Tesla is that, that, uh, that uh, DNA embedded uh, sense of making the cars beautiful and making them fun. And well, who else can do that? Porsche. So I, I think they, they could be the one. That's who, I think that's where I'm going to place my, my betting chip, right there. All right. You know, so far everybody gave me a different answer, so there will be a clear winner at some point. So, yeah, interesting, but you might be right. I mean, they are going for their own uh, infrastructure for the charging. They're the only ones doing it. Everyone's going to be relying on networks like Electrify America and Ionity. So this might not be a, a bad guess at all. And now that, you know, they, there will be two of them, <laughs> that only probably makes the case stronger. All right, listen, of course we can probably chat forever, but um, I think we got to go home and sleep at some point. <laughs> Because this garage, I think, closes. <laughs> we might actually sleep here at some point if we don't stop this madness. But uh, why don't you tell our audience if for some reason some of them still haven't heard or subscribed to your podcast, uh, uh, tell, t tell them where they can find you and also how they can subscribe on different platforms and so forth. And I'm going to put that in the description of the video. Sure. Appreciate it, Alex. So uh, I'm just podcast only, no YouTube for me as of now. Uh, you can find me on pretty much any of your favorite podcast services, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, uh, Spotify as well. The best thing is just, if you just Google search Ride the Lightning Tesla, should pull right up and uh, if you want to subscribe that, you know, that doesn't cost anything, it just means it'll download right to your phone or a computer every week and uh, yeah, give it a listen, see, what you, see if you like it. It's, it's a week, uh, a weekly, every Sunday is the new episode, a weekly recap and analysis of, uh, of the week in Tesla, you know, my take on things. We have, uh, I have callers, people call in and uh, with their questions, so that's a, that's a fun part of the show too. So, you know, I do my best and, and hopefully you might find it entertaining and or informative. And also, how can they follow you on Twitter? Because that's the way to, 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 to figure out what Elon Musk is talking about. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. And I'm also going to put it in the description of this video. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. It's, it's, it was the second time meeting you, and I'm hoping we're going to meet more. If, if there, especially if there are more Tesla events, which it should be, it should be very soon. Uh, so thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Well, I, that's it for me here in San Francisco, California. Until next time, uh, take care, and remember to stay charged.